our Super Tuesday doubleheader starts in the Breslin Center in East Lansing, a neighborly Big Ten feud. Number seven, Michigan at 16 and three against the 25th ranked Spartans of Michigan State who come in at 11 and five. Well, the folks were in green tonight and they are in abundance, are up and ready for this one at the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan. And let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two clubs tonight. Brought to you by Advil for the Michigan Wolverines. King Rose, Jackson Weber, and Juwan Howard. And Clark, he is Mr. No-Nonsense. He goes about his business. He is all business. Sprained his ankle yesterday in practice. A little ginger on that right ankle. Right ankle. We'll see how that evolves. Steve Fisher, as you can see, 2-4 and four against Michigan State. The starters for the Spartans tonight. Stevens, Wyshynski, Paplowski, Respert, and Eric Snow at guard. And I guess defense is his biggest side of the ledger rather than the offensive side of the ball. Exactly right. He's an excellent pressurer of the basketball. But if the, if the Spartans are going to have an opportunity to win tonight, they need him to make good decisions in the, in the transition game. Judd Heathco, 16 and 16 in his career against Michigan. He told me just a couple of moments ago, he said, I don't want to get into their running game, but we're not good enough to play just half-court offense against the Wolverines, so we're going to have to mix it up a little bit. So we'll see what kind of flavor he comes out with early. I think the key for the Spartans is they've got to do a job on the backboards so they can get some easy scoring opportunities in transition. Chris Weber to jump it up in the air and the tip goes to the Wolverines. You can expect Michigan State to be in a man-to-man -man defense, but they'll really protect the paint area. They're going to make Michigan shoot the ball from the perimeter. Snow puts it deep in the corner. Lysinski for three, not there. And it's Weber on the board. And that's another thing that the Spartans are concerned about. One shot and out because of the job that Michigan does on the board. Howard left alone on the baseline. Not there. Jackson with a follow. That's 40% of the Wolverines offense put back. Resper can't get it to go. And Popowski not there in time for the rebound. So Michigan will push it back. It is not enough to play good defense on the Wolverines on the initial shot. All five guys boarded. Live inside Weber. Four to nothing. And Weber with that typical, it's not really a taunt, but that is his way of getting himself fired up and his teammates fired up. Well, I talked about it a little while ago. Emotion and intensity will be at fever pitch here tonight. Look for Respert. Kowalski now will get it to him. Four to nothing. Wolverines on top early. Inside the pet. Nice move on the baseline. He'll score the first two. Boy, he is a big man, Clark. And if he gets any kind of drop step on you, you're going to wind up with a foul or he's gone by you. Exactly. He eclipses you in the post with that wide body. Jump hook. Can't get it to go. It'll be with the Spartans. On the run. Restrict. Fishes it off the glass and we're tied. Wyszynski, I beg your pardon. B to Howard. Easy two, and if they get it in that low, there's not much stopping the combination that plays down in the paint. You love the unselfishness. Weber and Howard will reward each other for good ball movement once the ball is passed to either one in the low post. They draw so much attention because both are so skilled there, they often have an opportunity to hit the open man. Bounce pass is stolen. Wolverines come away with it. Jackson misses and Popowski will rip it down. Jackson was a very prolific scorer in high school, but has been called on to play primarily defense since he's been at Michigan. Popowski almost an air ball. Barely drew iron on that one. Spin move, and he can't get a 
have to go after he came free. Snow had the step, but missed the layup. What about the man-to-man? -man? Are you surprised that the Judd is going this way? When I talked to him this morning, I was a bit surprised, but he really doesn't like to play zone and said his team has been categorized as his own team because they won the national championship with it 60 years ago, he said. So everybody assumes they play zone when, in fact, they play a lot more man-to-man, -man, but it's a sloughy, soft man-to-man -man where they actually concentrate on keeping the ball out of the paint. See, take a look. Nobody out beyond the free throw line, really. Look inside to Rose, and he'll get it. A whistle and a foul. I believe Poplowski will pick up the foul. The interesting thing that they're doing, and your point is well taken. Jackson that far out of the three-point line, nobody came out to pick him up. He said, we'll give you that shot. But the only problem is if you're going to take away the inside, you can't allow a pass like this. Pseudo penetration by Jackson. Snow loses, con loses sight of the ball in his man and ends up getting burned on that little back door cut by Jalen Rose. And after the field goal, Rose had some theatrics for the fans right behind him. <laughs> Riley checks in. Weber goes to the bench. And Steve Fisher immediately goes to Weber and is down on one knee and is discussing what is happening or not happening on the offensive end. Anthony Miller, who you talked about in the opening, another wide body, the fellow they call Pig. What the students have nicknamed him, number 34. Well, he is definitely a pig on the glass, their best per minute rebounder. He gets one every three minutes of play. Not there, and it's Rose. Boy, Michigan's guards crash and do it well, but when you're as big as he is, you got to go to the glass. Well, Jimmy King is third in conference play in boards, averaging five a game, but between him and Jalen, they come up with close to ten boards a night. points for him. Riley got tapped on the arm, but it's Miller who will be called for the violation. One of the keys tonight, in addition to what we talked about at the top, inside play by Miller and Peplowski to go right along with that is neither one of those guys can afford the cheap fouls. They need to stay on the floor for a long time tonight. So we'll take a break. Eight to seven, Michigan. We have played just over four and a half. Are you a skinny mini or a scrawny? Eight seven, Michigan, very early. You're effective in the post by using your feet. Take a look at Weber. He just kind of leans and baits Peplowski into thinking he's going high. Then the nice reverse pivot, eye contact made with the passer, and you've got the finish at the basket. Then at the other end, again, take a look at the lower body, folks, the feet. Look at this. He beat Weber before he even caught the ball because he had drop-stepped on him as he caught the ball and got to the basket. Excellent work by both those guys. And look at this right here in the Big Ten field goal percentages. Popowski, 67 almost 68 percent and Weber 63. Well you shoot a good percentage when you get shots <laughs> close to the goal. And that point blank's pretty close. Michigan. Michigan seven rebounds in the ball game. All five starters have at least one board. They all go to the glass. That's why it's so important for Michigan State to rebound the ball defensively because then they've got an opportunity to transition because all five goal jerseys will go to the goal. Rob Polinka had checked into the ball game and it, the foul is called on Juwan Howard. His first. You know, Michigan is out rebounding their opposition in conference games by eight boards per game. And I said earlier, they get 30 to 35 percent of their points on putbacks. And it, it, to talk about the job, I mentioned what Jalen did a minute ago. Their guards have three rebounds already. It'll stay with the Spartans. 14 minutes and 46 seconds left to play in this opening half. 8-7, Michigan. Where Michigan State has had trouble in the half court 
offensively. Well, you know, that's what I told you that the uh, judge said just before the ball. He said, we're not good enough at half court to, to, to dwell on that all night. King comes away with it. Polinka will pull it up and they'll reset. Quite honestly, Ron, there are very few teams good enough to survive on simply a steady diet of half court offense. King, nice spin move, and he knocks it down. Only two of the last seven shots for Michigan have they put in. Stevens wants it inside, and he will get it to Miller, but now Miller got to look for some place to go. Miller got away with the walk. He had one plant foot. He changed it to the other. And the officials were looking to see if he had stepped on the sideline, missed the walk. Three yeah. turnovers now against them. He covered an awful lot of ground with one bounce, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> the pick was moving. <laughs> Ten to seven, Michigan on top. <laughs> Whistle away from the ball, and it's an offensive foul against Michigan. And I believe they're looking at King. His first. Left portion of your screen, there it is. King just trying to get himself open. Little lower body root canal on Wyshynski. Got the foul called on Jimmy King. I'd like to see King be a little more aggressive. He's got a lot more to his game, I think, than he's been able to show or that he's been, he's been willing to show. Weber with the steal, and they're gonna call the foul on Michigan State. And Judd has just gone ballistic. He can't believe it. Take a look at it. You make the call. Good steal by Weber. And now Stevens knows he can't challenge the shot. Steps in. And from that angle, folks, it was the right call. You know what? I think maybe if he hadn't tried to hook him with his leg, then mm -hmm. it might not have been so quick to call it a defensive foul. Here at home, it might have been an offense. Excellent call that time by Steve Wilmer. Right on top of it. Steve about 6'5", so he gets a nice bird's eye view of most calls. Weber gets the follow. Palenka, nobody picked him up. Nobody boxed him. Kapowski prepares to check back into the lineup as it is a five-point lead for the Wolverines, and that's going to be a travel. One of the things that makes it so difficult about trying to defend this fine Michigan team, though, Weber shoots a three-pointer on the last trip. This time he's down in the paint. You don't know where you're going to have to contest him, do you? They've really got tremendous versatility. They've got size and strength up front. They've got enough depth to wear you down. They're very explosive because everybody rebounds and they defend so well. This team has tremendous spurtability in that they can get an awful lot of points in short periods of time. There's one of those fouls you were talking about against Pep, that, and his coaches will call that a little bit of a, a cheapie. It's his second, but watch him clearing out here. Judd Heathcote and I talked about this this morning. He said Peplowski will try to get open in the post with his upper body too much and pick up one or two silly fouls again doing that. Prime example right there. Again, I said it earlier, you get open in the post with your lower body. Rose, how in the world he got an angle. Four points for him, and it's now 14 to 7. And Papasi's going to have to be extremely delicate. We are early for him to have two violations. In the paint, the hook. Bethay in the follow. Damon Bethay, who got double figures in minutes in the last ball game, beginning to play more and helping. In the last couple, Ron, he had eight points in 11 minutes at Purdue, six and 10 minutes in the game prior to that. So Judd Heathcote gaining confidence in Damon Bethay. Four turnovers against the Wolverines. Right now you've got a situation where Michigan State has pretty much done what they've needed to do other than keep Michigan from second shot opportunities. I think they've gotten three or four putbacks. But other than that, the pace that they're playing at is good if they could convert, Ron. See, they've had transition opportunities that have come up empty for them, and that really demoralizes you. You've got to convert those quick hitting opportunities to get some confidence as you go back down to play deep. You see Michael Talley, number 14, out of Detroit Cooley, who has checked into the lineup. Riley battles for the board. Popowski tries to bang it off his leg, and it's going to stay with the Spartans. So timeout. 
11:59 of the first half. 14 to nine, Wolverines. In the 14 to nine, Michigan. Be sure to stay with us. Coming up next, we have the matchup between Arkansas, led by Scotty Truman, and the LSU Fighting Tigers. Dale Brown, and Nolan Richardson, in a classic coaching mashup from the Maribyrn Center in Baton Rouge, and it follows this game at 9:30 Eastern Time. Timmy Brando and Larry Conley standing by down in Baton Rouge. <laughs> well, that that'll be a fun one, and you can imagine that. Nolan will not be given red roses when he comes on the floor there. Just like Dale is not having, he doesn't have a hand delivered when he goes to Fayetteville either. Well, that time out just in the nick of time for the Spartans had expended an awful lot of emotional energy. Hook again close but not there. A mention before the game to the staff. They were hoping that he would use that more. It's something that Pep has been working on. Yeah, he got in early this morning. They didn't have a formal shoot around, but he came in early and got up a hundred or so baby hooks and drop step moves and getting ready for tonight's action. Weber for three and not there. And a foul with Shinsky. He ran up underneath on the rebound attempt and it's first on him. It goes without saying we're very close to the student section here at, at Michigan State. <laughs> and they're right on top of us. <laughs> Michigan 0 of 3 in three-point attempts. That Heathcote going to get Leplowski out of the game. He's got three, two fouls already, so give him a chance to, to take a little breather. Bethea, along with the Miller. And also Dwayne Stevens up front. Spartans going to the 2-3 zone. <laughs> 14 to 9. Low scoring affair so far. Howard looking for a spot to go and he's going to have a travel. And if it had not been a travel, he was in the paint for a very long time. It could have been either one of the Jeopardies, but it is a turnover against the Wolverines. There you take a look at what Michigan does on average. A little subpar thus far, but they've gotten pretty good looks, Ron. And at some point, they've got to start converting those because I think it gives you ammunition and confidence at the defensive end when you get some shots to go for you. Respert not in the ball game right now. Weber with emphasis. Wow. If, you, if you gamble and miss, you pay. Because when he gets within three feet of the rack, he's punching it. Looks like the Phantom of the Opera with that uh, with that mask on. Somebody said today at our production meeting, Michigan leads the nation in broken noses. Nice spin move as Michigan State finally puts two more on the board. They had a long drought there. Are you surprised at the, the low scoring and slower tempo in this one? is the Wolverines try to pick it up a little bit. Not really, Ron. The pace has been pretty quick. The conversion rate, certainly for Michigan State, has been what's lacking. They've gotten a good number of shots up in the first half of this first half. They just haven't converted many of them. And again, you have to try to score quick baskets against Michigan. Their half-court defense is a little underappreciated by most. David throws it away. Juwan Howard, and he misses as Weber is there to score, count it, and he was fouled. Boy, that's big. Weber has come up with a couple of situations, a garbage point there, and a foul, and a couple of jams. Here you see, off, after the good steal, no look, King to Howard. He's gonna blow the initial shot, but Weber just carved out some space, just slid Anthony Miller out, out of there, Gets the basket and the foul, and that's not easy to do. I mean, he moved Anthony Miller out of there to get weak side rebounding position. Miller goes about 250. Miller now with two fouls. As Weber completes the three-point play, he now has seven points, and it's 21-11. That's nine points on second shot, Ron, out of a total of 21 for Michigan.
Jed Heathcote walks over, sits down, he gets back up for a second, but he can't believe some of the foolish turnovers that his ball club has had in the last couple of moments. Riley will come back in. Howard goes to the bench. And, of course, you all know the story on that, the luxury of Michigan having a guy who was a starter, in fact, two years ago and even part of last until the Fab Five came in. And now he's a number a number six or a number seven man. Mm -hmm. A lot of clubs would like to have that problem. <laughs> you better talent. believe it. Jalen Rose. We're in a danger zone for the Spartans. They're losing a little confidence. They haven't won at home, so you wonder if they'd start pressing a little bit in an attempt to get off the snag. And they're down double digits. They need a couple of baskets consecutively to get themselves some confidence and some momentum. I think you're right. That's Ray Jackson who picks up the foul, his first. And he almost got bumped into the man as Weber was coming out to help out on the play. What Clark is talking about, we played over half of this first half of the Spartans, only 11 points. Number three. Wyshynski will come back into the lineup, the junior from Purcellville, Virginia. But they will go to the bench. One of the things you have to do against Michigan, they've got size and quickness at every spot, but you have to be ready to knock down your perimeter shots. When you challenge them inside, they're the best shot blocking team in the conference at just under seven per. So you've got to be ready to hit your open jays. Three is not there. Michigan State, Clark, has more turnovers than they do field goals. They've got seven turnovers and only five field goals so far. Well, I mentioned how Michigan's defense is underappreciated. Some of those turnovers, the unforced variety, others in direct correlation to the defense by Michigan. Snow dishes. Wyszynski for three. Got it. In the nick of time, and now he has eight. They needed that desperately. Somebody to pick up the slack. One of the best times, maybe the absolute best time to shoot to three is in transition. The defense is unsettled, and they don't want to run out to behind the arc to guard a shot. Three-second violation. So there's a timeout on the floor, 7.45, and the crowd back in it. Michigan State trailing by seven, but this is good basketball all the way around. Look at the box out by Poplowski. Stevens gets the board. Snow going to kick it ahead. Wyshynski to your left fills the lane. A third guy doesn't get there, but Rose naturally gets to the paint, and by that, by the time he reacts to Wyshynski, it's too late. Defenders are taught to run to the paint. That's why it's so good to be able to shoot the three in transition. And, and also the Spartans have got to start shooting better. Barely over 33%. Wyshynski is 3 of 5 in, in attempts. The rest of the team only 3 of 12. And they have had some in-close opportunities that they have blown. I think they were idling a little high early. That emotion and adrenaline yeah. was pumping. Now they've idled down and they should be able to get some finishes. Case in point right there. He's going to go to the line for a couple, but he had an opportunity Popowski, to uh, to get a three-point play. Just used his body to get to the cup. Eric Riley, take a, take a listen to these numbers. Roy Tarpley is the all-time leading shot blocker at Michigan. Numbers two and three are on the current Michigan team. Eric Riley is second. Chris Weber is third. Depending on, on how long Chris Weber is a collegiate, is a collegian, rather, he probably will become the all-time shot blocker. Well, Boskell has just checked in the ball game, and after watching the lick that he took this weekend, I'm a little bit surprised to see him in there with broken nose and all, but he is wearing a plastic face mask just as Weber wears. I talked to him before the game, and this is his first time in competition with it. He didn't practice yesterday because they didn't have the mask made. He said it's not really a hindrance. Chris Weber's nose was a little displaced, so he needed surgery. Boskell's nose was just slightly fractured, and therefore he did not require surgery. After watching that lick on Sunday, though, that was the only oh, thing that was slight about it. Yeah, Boy, you're he exactly really right. Got clobbered. 
Jalen Rose. Nothing that hurts any more than that. They run the clock almost all the way down, and they take the crowd off of it with the easy shot. And Pep comes back with two at the other end. 23-16. Drive, draw, and drop a dime. That's what Eric Snow did there with the quick hitting penetration. Another lane violation. Weber will come back into the line. And there's Boswell, and you can take a look at that mask. And you can see how black his eyes are. Mm -hmm. from, and folks, if you've ever had a broken nose, I, I just have to think that the youngster has in the back of his mind, please don't get bumped tonight because <laughs> you'll cry for hours. And there's the other mask, Weber. And in fact, he's about to be able to take his mm -hmm. off, right? Yeah, he's very close to getting rid of the mask. Although you wonder if, in fact, having been hit there once, would he not wear it the rest of the season? Klaus back outside. Wyszynski from 12 gets it. Beautiful inside. Ten points for him. Outside action. Kaplowski felt the triple team and got it back out to Wyszynski. Snow with his first. <laughs> People with very little sympathy about the broken noses as some of the student section would tape across the bridge of their nose. Bonus situation, seventh foul. Well, it's always nice in hostile territory when the fans are screaming and going crazy to knock down one of those free throws that hits nothing but rope. <laughs> it's so much sweeter when it's a cleanly made free throw to silence the crowd. That old melody of cord and floor. Oh, yeah. Nothing like it. And he did it twice. Double the pleasure. 25-18 and still a seven-point ball game. About to go into five minutes until halftime. Air ball, Kapowski right there, lost the handle, and then he'll score after he regained some presence and control. Big trip right here. Weber in tight, can't get it. Weber battles for it again, and he's fouled. May have taken a shot to the face. He's not up quickly at all, and I think he took a shot right to the face there. Actually, it looks like he's grabbing his mouth now, but great work inside. Tenacious rebounder is Chris Weber. There you see him bumped by Stevens and then grabbed by Stevens there from that angle. Hard to say exactly where he got hit, but... Now what? They're checking for blood, right? Mm -hmm. I think he may have taken a shot in the mouth. Here's another angle. There's the fight for the loose one. Weber comes up with it. He's bumped right there by the body and okay. then smacked across the face You're right. by Stevens. Yep. Clark, the thing that, that would make it very difficult with that mask, you can see from the shot that we had from the back, as you see his mouth is bleeding, but how tight those straps are around the back of his head so it won't j become jarred and block his vision. Five-point game. Boy, Eric Snow really pushing the basketball. Unfortunately, more times than not, he hasn't had teammates out in the lanes with him. Since he knew that it was touched by Michigan, so he just let it go out of bounds. 5-10 until intermission time. I think Michigan State has weathered this storm rather well to be playing no better offensively than they can. I'll agree with you there. Resnick, they got it.
Weber gets it. And that's all Popowski could do with the two fouls. He certainly didn't want to pick up a third right there. Snow and My. a foul against Weber. My goodness, Eric Snow is just pushing the basketball right at the Wolverines and creating opportunities for himself or his teammates. Doesn't get the finish here, but this puts tremendous pressure on the defense coming right at you. Nice little move to avoid King and draw the foul. Weber wanted to walk, and my partner here wanted to walk too, but I think that was well within you know, the rule. In, with, in looking at the replay, you're right. They're going to get Popowski out not only to catch his breath, but we'll, we'll see if he comes back or not with that two fouls. You know the judge does not want him to get number three just before halftime. Well, that's a rather ugly number, to say the least. He just got well. You know they know what he's shooting from the line after the response he got for knocking that one down. That's the first one for Michigan State of the night. Two-point game. Hey, I tell you what, Ron. For a guy that struggled as much as he has, you don't know how much of a lift that could be to him, his teammates, and this crowd to knock down two free throws. Howard got free. Boy, Stevens missed an opportunity, overplayed him, and got caught. I agree with their head coach in watching the way they played half court. I think they're doing the smart thing and pushing it up the floor the way they've done the last three trips, don't you? There is absolutely no doubt about it. And I think that's the way you have to play Michigan if you've got somebody that can push the ball ahead because they're pretty solid in their half court defense. And yeah. you want to try to get easy looks. The best way to do that is in transition. Great and then you also, you've got a chance to wear them down a little bit by pushing the ball back at them. They've got to not only worry about getting down on offense, but now they've got to worry about getting back on D. Miller on the follow of the frustration will get the foul. And that's going to be three on him. That foul a moment ago, by the way, on Jackson was his second. You know, and the other thing about fatigue, and we talked about this in our cut-in that we did for Sports Center. This Michigan team played 48 hours ago, and they did it on the road. Now here they are on the road again. Last night, we had Missouri at Kansas, and I thought Missouri looked a little listless in the second half. They had a similar situation. Game in 48 hours later. That's, that's tough. It really is. Because not only do you get worn out physically, but you've got to gear up mentally and emotionally, especially when you're in your conference. And particularly when you're coming with a state rivalry like this one. Exactly. Not there, Stevens gets the board. And Six he, rebounds for him. Dwayne Stevens is unheralded, but all he does is make winning plays. Gets you four or five assists, six or seven boards, tough D, doesn't make any mistakes. He's very easy not to notice until you take a look at the film and see all the good things he's done for you. And then add senior leadership with that. Air ball. Wow, tough one there. Well, he kind of bagged us there, didn't he, Ron? Yep, sure did. <laughs> right after we souped him up, <laughs> he overshot the goal. Howard. Well, that's nice work inside. Gets that big body turned on. Once he's squared, not much you can do about it. What he does so well, Ron, is he keeps the ball high. Doesn't bring it to the floor. Long misses on three-point shots lead to long balls. But they have misses. Howard pulls it away. Six-point ball game. We're about to go into three minutes until a halftime. Six rebounds for him now. Jackson all the way to the hoop. Not there, but look who's inside. Weber loses it back up, and he'll go to the line for a couple. Well, right now, Judd Heathcote wants to be able to maintain, maintain contact with his two big guys out of the lineup. Miller with three fouls. Petklowski, I think, still just has the two. But Judd Heathcote would love to be able to stay within single digits while resting both of those guys and protecting their foul situation. Miller, we won't see the rest of this half. Petklowski, I think, won't come in unless things get a little crazy in the last three minutes here. Uh-oh, Miller's coming back. Well, that's why I'm a former player. <laughs> Well, maybe no, not. No. 
Maybe Judd momentarily forgot that Anthony well, had three fouls. I started to say, the trainer who always uh, keeps the board over there probably said, Coach, he's got three, mm -hmm. and that's when he called him back. So the man they call Pig is going to be there until uh, the break time, I would imagine. Time out on the floor. 3.04 left until halftime. 33 to 25, Wolverines. Nothing. Well, we had a two point game just moments ago. Now, Michigan by eight. They've run off six straight. Four of those belong to Juwan Howard. Moving without the ball here. Weber steps out, finds him. Nice target hand. Good seal of Stevens. Easy bucket at the basket. Now, take a look at excellent low post work. He is so sound fundamentally in the post, it's scary. Catch it. Look and see what you've got. He tries to drop step. No go there. Pump fake, no go. Keep it high. Excellent patience. Nice use of the window. And I talked to him before the game. I said, Big fella, are you going to bring it tonight? And he said, yeah, I can't let a sprained ankle keep me from playing in this one. And he has brought it in big fashion the last two minutes. He's got eight points, six boards in the half. Turnover. Boy, Judd is really upset. There's nothing that upsets a coach anymore than right after a timeout on a play that has been set and to throw it away. And that was really what they call an unforced error. Yeah. Very. I mean, nobody really pressuring the ball. So the big fella comes back in. Popowski back in the lineup with just under three to play until halftime. Well, I think if Judd is going to risk him being on the floor, his teammates better find him at the offensive end and try to get a look inside for Popowski. Well, as far as the boards, offensive rebounds, Michigan six, Michigan State three. And second chance points, Wolverines 13 to four. Riley with a pair. First two for him. Excellent catch and finish. He's got a chance to play at the next level, even though he only averages 15 minutes a game. He's seven feet tall. He can block shots. He's added weight. He's got a nice touch. He's a guy that will get a hard look at the next level. Michigan State's got to be careful right here. This is back to a double-digit game, and that shot is blocked by Riley, and he's going to be called for the foul. And look at Weber grabbing, saying, don't react. Just put your hand up. Well, a while ago when Eric Snow knocked down consecutive free throws, the crowd was in it. Yep. And I thought that might be a chance for momentum to swing, but the spurtable Wolverines put together one of their 6-0 blitzkriegs and now lead by 10. Clark, we both had them quite a few times over the last two years. And you know, one of the things that's really scary about them, it's it, we made the analogy during the timeout, it's almost like blood in in water and they're they're like sharks i mean just they it's a frenzy all of a sudden and a close game is is a 10 point game which is what it's done right here i like to call that spurt ability and to have that as eric snow as good as he was on the first two shows you why he struggled that folks is hard to do he <laughs> and i can't as, as the expression goes that one he would not have hit the ocean with yeah. an air ball. And, of course, Steve Fisher hopped up and said, no, they can't rebound it. That's our basketball out of bounds. Yeah. And I can't, I can't offer any personal insight on air ball free throws because I don't think I ever shot one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be stolen. Maybe he can get a reprieve here. Oh, wow. Jalen Rose, a mile high. And watch this uh, this foul and block. I like the I like the action by both players here. Here, good anticipation by Snow. Now take a look. He wants to flush this one, but Rose knows that and makes a great play on the ball. That's really excellent does. play both ways. Even though Rose picks up the foul, aggressiveness by Snow to try to dunk it, and then Rose recognizing that going right at the ball. And of course we all know, but in case we don't, Percy Snow, his brother, linebacker for the Chiefs. The reason they're cheering here is after the air ball he put up last night. He's now three of five at the strike. 
Boy, you look at his free throw shooting and wonder why mechanics look decent. He seems to really palm the ball though and lay it in his in his palm a little too much. But you like the way he's pushed the ball and you love the way he defends. Howard misses this one. They battle on the boards and Stevens. Can he save it? No. Man, that was a great play attempt by Stevens. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett Report. Jim's teaching Tuesday, number 12, Florida State against Jacksonville. Other scores and highlights. And that was almost a great play by Stevens to retrieve the ball before it went out of bounds and then to have the presence of mind to send it towards his goal. Unfortunately, it ended up out of bounds. Well, we've talked about how critical this game is for Michigan State, but it's just as important for Michigan oh, no from doubt. the standpoint that they already have a home loss, and Indiana has already won three road games and going out to an 8 0 mark. Three pointer won't go, but Stevens right there inside took it up strong, and Weber has just picked up the foul. He's second. Using that foul number four. Chris you get most rebounds on the side opposite from which the shot is taken. Good work here by Stevens and doesn't have much room, just elects to crack up into Weber and draws the foul. Either one of these teams shooting it very well from the free throw line, although Michigan in Big Ten play is shooting it at 71%, which is more than respectable. Michigan State comes in at only 64% in conference play. They haven't done much to help that number tonight. No, they haven't. And you know, it, in fact, as they have tried to spurt with Michigan, Michigan State has missed their last five shots. And a couple of free throws in that too, Ron. I know Snow missed two, and Stevens just missed the first there, so. to 27. We're about to go under one minute until halftime. Boy, Howard really working hard, wanting it in the post area. Look at Juwan Howard really begging for it. Battle inside and Howard. As a couple of folks got cleared out on that one. I had the isolated cam on Howard that time, Ron, and he truly earned that opportunity. It'll stay with the Spartans with 37 and a half seconds left. Look at him work. Look at Jawan Howard work. Now watch him get to the glass. Just works his way free. Sometimes you get away with using your hands, and Jawan got away there. Snow fouled by Bosco. His first. You can see with that close-up shot how black those eyes are after having that nose broken on, on Sunday. Well, when he got hit with the elbow, he went down. Just He was out. It took a long time to get him up. Kind of a scary situation. Yeah, it really was. It was nice to see him get up and know that at worst it was a broken nose. And great to see him back out there so soon. And you can, you can believe that he is playing with more than a little bit of pain tonight. Now that mask really makes you sweat too mm -hmm. because it's made out of plexiglass the same material that the backboard is made out of and I imagine once you get up and down a few times that you just got to be drenched Gerald McHale is a man who designed the one for Weber and, and, and also for Vasco One of the reasons they said Bosco would have worked out yesterday, but they didn't have the mask fitted yet. Right. Thought, wow, that's that's really looking for some pain. Shot clock is off. You can see the game clock. Michigan has played a pretty solid first half when you consider the environment, what's at stake. They've been able to very methodically build a nine-point lead. And Jalen Rose in this situation will look to penetrate. Little pick and roll being set up between him and Jawan Howard. Watch for the roll. He just throws that one, and by golly, he came very 
close to making it. So let's take a timeout. It is halftime. 37 to 28. The Wolverines leading. In the past, when I bought a car, the salesman comes uh, in the East Lansing. 37 to 28. And we had a two-point ball game just before halftime came. But what happened was Michigan State Clark did not get a field goal the last five minutes of the first half, and it doesn't take long to self-destruct that way. They were bagel for seven. Here you take a look at the reason Michigan State had the lead. Look at Jawan Howard get that chicken wing up high and get Fike out of the way and get himself to the offensive glass for one of four Michigan Wolverine putbacks. We have to take a look at what Michigan State needs to do in order to get back in this. Good clean board here. Nice push of the ball by Resper. He gets it ahead to Snow, who penetrates into the paint and then kicks it out to Wyshynski for the wide open triple. And the Spartans got a number of these kinds of looks, but they rarely got that result. Well, the stats in the first half, 34% is all the Spartans were able to shoot. And, of course, that, that run late in the half took the crowd out of the ball game, which uh, really kind of defeats the purpose of why they're here playing at the Breslin Center tonight. Well, you look. There you see their numbers for tonight. 53% leads the conference. They're going to have to step on that offensive gas pedal to get close to their norm. Stevens, by the way, already with nine rebounds. That ties the season high for him, one short of a career high. Kowalski, you see the double on him. Stevens will take it in around that screen, and he gets it. Boy, a lot of big bodies in traffic there. Well, he made a nice little clutch move to get that one up and down. Michigan has yet to block a shot here tonight. They average almost seven blocks a game. Jackson with short jumper, not there, but follows his own shot. Nobody closed him out and he gets the reverse. Wow. Mm. 21, basket by 21, Ray Jackson. Well, you've got to seal the shooter because he's the most dangerous guy on the offensive glass, especially when he misses the shot in the paint. And he was like a cat. He just went right after it. We talked in the first half a couple of times about the way everybody from Michigan goes to the boards, particularly their guards. Nice look inside and snow. That's an easy two. He's going to get an opportunity for three. Who made the pass? Dwayne Stevens. A do-it-all type of player. He's kind of like a balanced mutual fund in that he gives you a little bit of everything. Poplowski to Stevens. Bullet pass right on the money. Snow with the hesitation pump fake. Drew the foul and got the deuce. Jalen Rose gets his second violation. Stevens comes away with it. So Snow with an adventure from the free throw line misses, and then the three-pointer by Resford won't go down. You know, when you're a shooter, though, like Resford, I think you just got to keep putting it up. Oh, yeah, you've got to keep cranking it. Now Michigan opens the door a little bit. Another turnover. Seven point. They can bring it to five or even four. Michigan played a methodical first half, got themselves a nine-point halftime lead, and you know the home team feeding off the crowd is going to make a push at you, whether it be in the first five minutes or after eight or nine minutes in the second half. How Michigan responds to that push is going to determine the outcome tonight. Oh, he had got the reverse, couldn't get it to go. You really believe the first three to five minutes in the second half is awfully big, though, don't you? I think typically it is, but I don't like to make that rule as a general, that, that statement as a general rule, because there's certain points in the game where it's more critical than, say, in the beginning or the end. By the way, that, that rebound by Howard a moment ago, Clark, was his 10th of the night. So Klauski takes it up strong, and Howard picks up the foul, his second. Take a look. Look at the lower body. 
good spread by Poplowski. Weber a little soft defensively there, kind of in a surrender position. And then here's the good move to draw the foul on Howard, who had to come over the top. When you've got a big body, you want to make sure you get it between the ball and the defender so you force fouls. Well, he still had hit one tonight. He's 0 for 3. I mean, that's, you know, when you go to the free throw line and miss him, that's like going to the store with no money. <laughs> I mean, it's meaningless. You got to make your free throw. I haven't heard that analogy, but I certainly will make it. 41 to 33. <laughs> With his left hand, and it won't go down. Steve Fisher was off the bench jumping, hoping that that one would go. Rose just switched it over and got it up. Well, he's tough to defend, being a left-handed shooter. And he likes to shoot under pressure. He's a shot manufacturer. And that sometimes the more difficult the shot, the more he seems to like it. Contact by Snow. And Rose almost got that one to fall. Yep, he did. He's two of three for the free throw line tonight. One of the things about Jalen Rose that's going to have to improve as he runs this club is his decision making at the end of halves, certainly at the end of ball games. As the point guard, he has the ability because of his size and skill to get a shot for himself. But his thought process has to be maybe I need to throw it inside when we need a basket late in the game or late in the half that shot he took to end the half wasn't the best of shots and he's been guilty of that on a couple of occasions this season on the floor Petlowski comes away with the, the garbage he'll get the two 42 35 His pocket pick. Snow and Weber will let him go uncontested. Now here comes the crowd again. It is a five point game. <laughs> Stepped on the baseline. Sparking ball. You have to think as you this crowd is just going out of their mind. You have to think that Steve Fisher continues to say to himself, as long as we can keep just a little lead. But if we let them go in front, all of a sudden this thing could mushroom. And this is one of the key points in the game. It just so happened that it has come about within the first four minutes. But this is a key point. Will the Wolverines be a pine tree and bend with the breeze and not break? Or will they be like a whittle tree and break as the storm continues? Stevens can't get the reversal. Gets his own board. Fights it up. Foul on Weber. Three on Chris. Dwayne Stevens. Going strong to the right, no go. Persistence pays as Petlowski keeps it alive. Stevens may have gotten away with the foot shuffle there, but when bodies are banging, the feet are the last thing being watched by the officials. And finally, Weber is charged with the foul, but one of my favorite lines is persistence pays, and no better illustration of that than what you saw Dwayne Stevens do there. By the way, that rebound we saw Stevens get. Was his 11th? That's a career high for him. Uh, Jed Heathcote is not even looking right now. And I wouldn't look up and I would leave. Miss both. He just he looked up and then looked away again. The boy, the Spartans could have made it a three-point ball game. That kills you, Ron. When you've got a chance to add and cut into a lead, you've got to make your freebies. 
12 rebounds now for Steven. Respert will take it strong, and he misses, followed by Snow. for him. If you're Michigan, you've got to go inside here. Oops. <laughs> Ray Jackson, all of a sudden, one of the non-scorers, so to speak, for Michigan, pulls up and hits a 17-footer. He's capable, though. He got 12 points in 15 minutes Sunday. Boy, this guy has really struggled tonight. One of six in the first half. Sean Respert comes in averaging 19. Tries to create, and Weber, who is outside on him, gets a piece of the ball. Stolen from behind, and a foul. Stepped on the baseline, I beg your pardon. So there's a timeout. 14:52 left in the ball game. 44 to 39. Wolverines 44 to 39. Take a look at this piece of work by Ray Jackson. Gets his own pump fakes once, and then knows where the goal is on a five-star system. That rates a five and a half. <laughs> Take a look at Eric Snow, who's having an outstanding floor game. Good hustle to go back in and pilfer it from Howard. And then the acceleration, gear number four, to outrun Rose and Weber to the goal. Boy, if he could make some free throws, I think only four of five of ten tonight. But everything else has been sterling. Good, solid defense. Nice pushing of the basketball. Very active and aggressive defensively. Lobs it to Riley. Out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Wolverines. Kowski saying he didn't touch it. I think they'll confer and get this one changed. Let's take another look at it. Steve Fisher doesn't protest, but he knows better than to try. The only thing he could complain about is whether Petlowski should have been whistled for a foul, but clearly the ball was last touched yep. by Eric Riley. Well, I think you've got to get Peplowski inside or shake Respert free for a good look at a three. Peplowski has it blocked by Weber. What a play. And Weber playing with three fouls. Clutch right there. He's got such excellent timing to go along with the size and the strength. And how about the touch from behind the arc? He can't much shoot it 15 feet. But taking to 19, he'll bury it, and then taking to the other extreme within five or six feet, and he'll make you pay all day. He's really got 14 points, Clark. Really kind of strange that in between the circle and the dunk range, um, he struggles a little bit, does Chris Webb. Traveling called on Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose needs to tighten his game up a little bit. He loves to have fun. He enjoys the electricity of the crowd, be it at home or on the road. But his game is a little too loose. He needs to tighten it up so that he doesn't make the careless mistakes and the poor decisions like he does on occasion. Well, you can see the number of turnovers that uh, have occurred here in the second half. And Popowski tries to throw it through somebody. They get it back, and Rosensky 4-3 won't go. Mm, mm, mm. They're okay. shooting like they're on the road. You're exactly right. You can't get much, you can't get a much better look than that. Nice give and go. King was fouled, and he'll go to the line. In case you've just joined us, coming up next, Arkansas at LSU. Brando standing by down at Baton Rouge along with uh, Larry Conley. In this ball game right here, Michigan has never trailed. The biggest lead that they have had is 10. Michigan State, after they went down, cut it back to two and then did not score a field goal for the last five minutes of the first half. Therefore, they trail by nine at the intermission. And they've had a little bit of an air pocket here after getting it to within three. They now are down nine again. And you wonder having lost all three conference games at home, if in fact they are feeling that pressure, pressing a little bit, 
and you also wonder how many runs can they make in free throw shooting has been an absolute albatross for the Spartans. I mean, you make half of your free throws, you've got four more points. Well, three point more points right now. twice has made Aaron passes because he's thrown it right into the trap. Good footwork there to get his body turned and throw it to the weak side. 14 points for him. And it looks as though Rusinski is going to pick up the foul. Snow, we're told that's a career high for him at uh, 14 points. A sophomore making, an, a, making a position adjustment playing the point guard, doing an outstanding job. There you see Wyshynski having picked up his third foul. Rose, shot won't go, and the big fella comes away. Oh, my. Snow, nothing. He's Again, having... oh, so close. Get the shot at point blank and miss it. I started to make the point that you wonder how many Michigan, how many runs the Spartans have left in them, Ron. They've gotten close, but haven't been able to put together back-to-back -to -back scoring possessions, and that wears on you, especially when you're at home against a top-notch team like Michigan. King, Howard, can't get it. They play volleyball with it, and Pep will come it up court. The Foul called from behind. Resford will pick it up. Shelton's the timeout on the floor. Must take it with him. 11:41 left to play. Hi. Five-point game. Just under 12 to play. Clark. Chris Weber showing you why he's an All-American. Doing it at both ends. Good fight and tussle inside. Kaplowski will get it. But Weber, with excellent timing, denies the shot. The Wolves come up with it, and then at the other end, Weber buries the three-pointer. There you look at his numbers. Rebounding, scoring, blocks, three-point field goal percentage. He is what we say, he is what we call stuffing the stat sheet. He'd be a candidate for the... Um, Stat sheet stuffers supreme. <laughs> and I hope he sticks around. I know what a lot of people are suggesting, but I hope he doesn't do that. Howard, boy, again, athleticism and body control, just like he's impossible to knock off his, uh, off his stride, out of his lane. Always on balance. Excellent footwork. Good hands to make the catch and finish. And then good movement without the ball to get in position for the shot. And Michigan, time and time again, has been able to come up with a basket just when this crowd was in a frenzied mode. Yep, they really were. And all of a sudden, it goes very quiet again. So we're about to go under 10 minutes left in this one. Persinski off balance and nails it. Falling away is 15 points. Tally with the no look. So the Spartans with another opportunity to cut it down. 
to a three-point ball game. And that's been the resistant level of this was the stock market. That's where things have kind of slowed up for the Spartans. Can they break through it? Not this trip. Again, another shot that is partially blocked. Riley got a hand on it. Boy, Howard got pushed. Palenka right in front gets the loose carom and the easy two. Well, that was a saved ball, and you hear coaches and analysts talk about not saving it under your basket. That's why. It might cost you a hoop. Reversed it, couldn't get it, and it's Bethea on the tip. A tip stuff. Jalen Rose misses an unfriendly roll for him. If you don't get a clean drive to the goal, you've got to knock down either a three or a medium range jump shot. The fair, not there, and the tip, Respert was fouled. Riley picks up his third. You know, Clark, Miller's going to go to the bench. But Thea came in in the first half. He not only had a good run, it was like things started to happen a little bit with him. And the same is true on this trip right here. I think they might not coach him for, uh, for the man across the way, but maybe lead him in a little bit longer, bring him in uh, shortly after he goes back to the bench. Well, he's an energizer. He's one of those kind of guys that can come in and make things happen simply because of his activity. Oh, Rashford knocks it down. He is having a horrible night from the floor. He is one of ten. And I think part of that is the Spartans have pressed a little bit on their shots. And that last possession, they even passed up a few good shots trying to get it inside. They've got to relax and take the shots when they present themselves. And Rusford is the kind of guy, though he struggled, he's still capable of coming up and making big shots for you. So here we go. It's a three-point game. Rose did it again. Back to a five-point margin. There's no D for that. Off the wrong foot, falling away, nothing but rope. Jackson and King both preparing to come back in. Long pass. Stevens couldn't get good enough control of it, and he misses. Whistle and a foul against Michigan State, and there is a timeout on the floor. So we'll take it with him. 7.54, left in the ballgame. 55-50, Wolverines. Well, Sparty is feeling it tonight. They may have to use him before it's all said and done. Down by five, and here's the storyline. Michigan never trailed. Largest lead is 10. Howard, 14 points and 12 boards. In Michigan State, that just says volumes. 37%, 42 at the free throw line, and Stevens a career-high 13 boards. That sums it up in those shooting numbers for Michigan State. And yet, they're still down only five. <laughs> they're down only five. Rose in and out. He was fouled. Rose really looking to take this game over. He had a little exchange with the fans about three or four minutes ago where they got on him and he responded in kind. And I think he's looking to make good on his end of that conversation. So he's stepping it up, looking for his shot. And because he's 6'8", and also because he's left-handed, he's a tough cover for just about any other guard in the country that'll have to defend it. Paklowski with the foul. It's his third.
Jalen three of six from the line this evening. Well, this guy right here, Eric Snow, aside from his free throwing, and even that's been a little better than normal. He has been truly outstanding. Kowalski. Snow for three. Two. Beg your pardon. Inside the line. 16 for him. Right on cue, Eric, out of Canton McKinley High School in Canton, Ohio. Can't get it. Must. Right on cue, Eric, out of Canton McKinley High School in Canton, Ohio. Weber can't get it. Muscles it back up and a chance for a three-point play. That's what you call just housing a guy. Just brute strength and tenacity. Shoehorns himself some space along the baseline. Not much room. Good challenge. Poplowski comes over the top. No whistle. And then there's the reach in by Snow. And Weber still strong enough to get it up and down. And he completes the three-point play. But there comes back into the lineup. Four on snow. This puts Wyshynski in a ball handling mode, which means he's probably not going to be able to spring him, spring himself free for shots. Ray Jackson picks up the foul. It's going to be his third. Michigan foul 21. Although both he and um, Sean Rusford can handle the ball well enough, so this might not be a bad situation for Michigan State. You've got two capable three-point shooters that are able to handle the ball equally well. It doesn't seem like Michigan is putting a lot of pressure on the backcourt guys as plexiglass and rim flying on that one. Well, <laughs> he's been looking away. He finally got to look at one that went down. 59-53, six-point game. As we have gone under seven to play. Howard not there. Weber with the follow, and he can't get it, and a foul on Bethay. And what the crowd behind us is hollering it is the fact that Howard... A long time in that lane before he got that lob pass. Yeah, he sets up shop in there. Actually, he could have been charged one night's room and board. <laughs> Discount or not. A true warrior and looks the part with that mask on, but this guy just eats glass constantly. I mean, he is a he is a terror on the offensive board. But it helps to have other guys like Howard, like Riley, your backcourt guys. When you've got so many guys that are dangerous on the offensive glass, it's impossible to put two bodies on Chris Webber. Yep, that's right. Michigan State can get to within one. They've been parked at between five and eight point deficits the last six minutes or so. Well, this would be huge if they got three here. No. Jackson. Travel. 
and good reason for it. He saw that large body of 276 pounds. Pep was already there. That's the reason he traveled. Well, I'm really thankful we've got a... I don't know if Jackson... You know, sometimes when a guy makes a move up top that looks a little strange, it's assumed that maybe he walked. Off Michigan and a disbelieving... Steve Fisher said, well, okay, Michigan State will have the ball. 529 to play, 60 to 59. And the numbers on the turnovers. Wolverines now with 16. And they've struggled. They've came into this game having three more turnovers per game than the opposition. You just saw they've committed five more than Michigan State tonight. This place is rocking now. Pep gets the two. It is a three-point game as we go under five. It is a different game now, Ron. This is the point I was making. If Michigan State goes on top, Michigan has got a far different problem than what they have right now. Mm -hmm. Timeout, Wolverine. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, 60 to 57, Michigan. It is Arkansas and LSU coming up later. Now, what about the Wednesday Jam session? Villanova at Pitt, number 15 in the nation, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Don't forget, little different start time on Wednesdays, and followed by the big one in the ACC. And I hope Vital has nothing but decaf tomorrow, because he's so fired up for this one already. North Carolina against Duke, around 9 o'clock Eastern time. And I know where all of us will be, sitting in front of a television someplace. Let's see what Michigan came up with out of the timeout. I think you've got to try to throw it in the hole in the paint area to Weber or Howard. That's the man to go to, and they wow. That's just solid execution. 20 points for him, and just cat quick. He got the drop step and was around. And then and he, he did it with the left foot rather than the right. And then he flushed it. To give the defender no opportunity to block. Stevens with the no look. And in his defense, he thought Wasinski was going to go ahead and break to the hoop. And he didn't. He stopped it. Well, you don't need the no look when every possession is so, so important. Wasinski had a good look at a three if Stevens makes the pass there. The Rice Owls, Willis Wilson. We had that team against the same Michigan club as inside and the easy one from Jalen Rowe. Rice played Michigan. They had an eight-point lead in the second half of that ball game. They're tied with Houston tonight. Willis Wilson's done an awfully good job. There's the steal. King will dish it to Rose, and he was fouled by Wyszynski. Spurtability, interior passing, defense that time leads to the fast break opportunity in the free throws. And this is one reason that I think Michigan has a chance to win it all, Ron. They're in a hostile environment. They've been able to weather the storm time and time again tonight. The other thing for Michigan State to contemplate, Wyszynski now with four fouls. Michigan State. In the past when I bought a seven point game is this crowd has done their part tonight. They have been very, very loud. Let's take a look at the standings again and why it is so very important for these two clubs. Michigan trying not to lose their distance between behind the Indiana ball club and then as far as Michigan State is concerned, three and four in the conference. They really can't lose anymore, can they, Clark? They really can't, especially when you talk about here at home having already lost their first three conference games at home. They can ill afford. I mean, you're looking at you, you know, you lose this one tonight, you're looking at going maybe five and four at best, and that means winning all five of your remaining home games. So it puts tremendous pressure on you on the road if you don't protect home court. Michigan, on the other hand, needs to continue to win and hope for some help within the conference in terms of catching IU. They've got a game at IU later on this season and in, in a couple of weeks. But that Indiana ball club playing extremely well, although that number one spot hey, has been we, um, 
quite shaky for those who have held it in the past. Almost the top five spots. We talked about that last night. Cincinnati goes to three, and they have to go to overtime to win last evening. Respect passes it up. Kosinski for three. Nothing. Battle inside, and Stevens called for the offensive foul. Well, he's done yeoman's work on the glass. Can't finish, and that a result of a good shot by Wyshynski that doesn't go down. Well, he picked up the offensive foul. He now has 15 rebounds, so his career high just continues to get bigger. It was 11. Well, Michigan now will look to come down, use some clock, and then try to throw it inside, I would think, to Weber or Howard. You've gotten points the last couple of possessions by going inside. No need to change it now. And it also serves another purpose in that it demoralizes Michigan State if, in fact, Michigan can get a hoop here by going inside. But also, it's a situation of 10 fouls against the Spartans. 65-57. We go under three. Rose Weber on the follow. Rose misses. They battle for it, and here comes Snow. The Klauski. And he'll go to the line for a couple. Boy, Judd was just about ready to call the timeout after the snow turnover. But now if they can knock down a couple of free throws, which certainly isn't a given, based on what we've seen tonight, they've still got an opportunity. Well, you've got to be impressed with Michigan. Time and time again tonight, especially in this second half, They've had opportunities as this crowd got into it. This crowd has been fabulous. They really have. They have done everything that, that you could do within the limits to, uh, to help their ball club along. And Mike Poplowski got his request granted. He implored the fans to be involved in the local paper. And they certainly haven't disappointed. I mean, even during times when Michigan has somewhat quieted the crowd they've still been on their feet and it nukes up this is the second king comes away with it 233 to play in the ball game 67 58 see howard and weber both can go out on the floor and handle the ball so you've really got five ball handlers out there for Michigan, and that puts tremendous pressure on the front line people for Michigan State having to run around and chase Weber and Howard out front and then defend them in the post as well. Howard misses, and Jackson Wasinski ran up underneath him, and that's going to be five of Wasinski. Don't forget, coming up next from Baton Rouge, SEC action on the Super Tuesday, Arkansas at LSU. Scotty Thurman. Take it on the LSU Fighting Tigers. Tim Brando and Larry Conley standing by down in the Bayou Country for that one. Well, he ends up with 15 points, does Chris Wyshynski. But had some good looks that didn't go down that could have changed the complexion of this one. Good solid effort though. Jackson was seven points and three rebounds. What you're hearing behind us, the student section trying to get on Jalen Rose a little bit, and he's He's uh, coming right back to him. He keeps pointing to Michigan and then up at the scoreboard. His club on top by 10. Stevens for three. Timeout. 
called. 146 left in the ball game. A seven point margin for the Wolverines. Six left to play, 68-61. And here are all the variables. Two timeouts left for Michigan, one for Michigan State. Team fouls, six and ten, so bonus for both in the possession era with Michigan. Well, if you're Michigan State, obviously you want to go for the quick steal or force the turnover. If not, you've got to start fouling rather quickly so you can try to stretch this game out and then shoot your three-point shot. And in three-point shots tonight, the Spartans are 5 of 17. But the real story of the ball game is what has happened at the free-throw line. Michigan was not golden by, by any shape of the imagination. They were 13 of 22 up until now. But the Spartans only 10 of 23. And a lot of those misses came in the midst of runs for the Spartans. There you see the numbers right there. And again, I make the point that a lot of those misses came when Michigan State had the crowd in it and was really ready to make a move into a Michigan lead and just unable to get the free throws to go down. Now you need cooperation from Michigan in regards to missed free throws. Then you've got to knock down some three-point shots or quick two-point field goals. Sixty-nine, sixty-one. rebound sometimes you don't realize he can jump that way <laughs> under a minute to play Rasput all the way and Weber rejects it and Michigan will throw it away it's Popowski dishes to Rasput for the two Whoever just threw it away. Michigan is making things difficult for something that should not be difficult. They really are, and carelessness, something they've struggled with recently. That's 18 turnovers against the Wolverines. Resperts not there, but they gets it back to him. Stevens for three. And Bethea knocks it out of bounds. Stepped on the sideline. So Michigan State will get it back. Weber said he touched it when he had the ball out of bounds. Or touched it before it went out? Mm -hmm. Maybe touched it as he was trying to pass it in. If he touched it while it was in his hands, it's a technical. Snow for three. It took only two. The official said nope, he was standing on the line. So the final timeout called by Michigan State will take it with them. 71 65. Don't settle for it. Okay, so the situation is they clear the floor here in front of us. 71 65. Michigan State trail by as many as 10. They have cut it to a three point lead on three different occasions, but that's as close as they could get it to come. Coming up next, Arkansas at LSU, and we'll be going there immediately following this one. Boy, this is wow. borderline ridiculous as Michigan continues to come up with turnovers. And now Steve Fisher wants a timeout signaling favorously he wants to have his ball club on the sideline to talk it over before this play goes into motion so we'll hold it right here 
16.8 seconds is what we have left. 71-65 with the Wolverines on top. Clark's been talking strategy as far as what has to happen. And I guess Clark, the strangest things have been in college basketball this year. I, you know, I don't doubt anything that could happen. No, they've got the basketball. Michigan State's got the basketball, so they're in the best position they could be in right now. They can run a quick out-of-bounds play for a three-pointer, get it to go down, and then they foul immediately or force a turnover. They've been lucky in that regard the last couple of times. Michigan has thrown the ball away. Three-point shots tonight, if you're wondering. The Spartans on the night are 5 of 19. Michigan is 1 of 10. And Nicodemus comes into the lineup for the Spartans, number 22. He's a capable three-point shooter. But whoever catches has to be ready to shoot the three. You can't afford to let five, five or more seconds elapse on the clock. Well, that's who they try to get it to. Rushford not there. Loose. Nicodemus feeds inside and they'll give him the easy two. Five seconds down to four. That's Weber it. puts it up and point two seconds showing on the clock. Well, in that situation, obviously a two pointer does you no good because what it does is allow the clock to run down because it doesn't stop when the ball goes through the hoop. And it looks like Michigan gets a much needed win and Michigan State continues to be winless at home in the conference. Arkansas up by one early in that when the Baton Rouge will be going there momentarily. Howard at the line 14 points and he has 13 rebounds. Gets them both.